Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to build, debug, uh, debug in a very uh, in various tools our Angular app. So before I dive into how to actually build out the code and we start going through and working on all the different components, I wanted to take a minute and focus on the tooling. If you really want to get good with the technology, my advice to you is that you invest a bunch of time up front learning how to use the whatever it is, the compiler, the linters, your editor, the, all the different tools that are involved, especially uh, your debugger. And we've got a number of debuggers that we can use for working on our app. So just as a quick reminder, what we're building, our goal is we want to build out this web app that we have here, which allows us to go through and look at all of these different Ontario bridges, visualize them, plot them on a map, display various information about them. And we're doing all of this inside of Angular. And in our previous video, what we did was we um, we started to work on the code. I have a in my editor now, I have uh, all of the, the base um, workspace has been generated, my initial app component and so on. And I wanna to talk to you about how do I build, run and debug this code before we get any more code in here. Okay. So you'll recall that when we were going through and looking at the list of all of the files that get generated, one of the files that we talked about was package.json. And in package.json, we noted that there were a number of scripts. So the, the one that I want to begin with is, is the start script. And typically with, um, with NPM, if you type run, you will, it will print out for you a list of all of the scripts that are available for you to be able to call. And there's a couple of special ones. So you can say npm start and npm test, and you don't have to say run. This is something you may already know. And everything else is custom. And so if you want to run those scripts, you're going to have to say npm run and whatever it is, npm run lint, npm run build, etc. So the one that I'm going to work on now is I, I want to be able to compile and run my code. So Angular is written in TypeScript, and that TypeScript cannot be executed by the browser. The TypeScript code has to be transpiled into JavaScript. In addition to transpiling the code into JavaScript, we also have to take all of these different modules, CSS files, etc., and we have to bundle them together so that the browser can efficiently load those. And so we have to run through an, a series of steps in order to do this. In addition, because we're doing a web app, we need a web server. You can't do web development without a web server, even if that web server is something that you're running locally. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this case. So one of the nice things about uh, how the Angular workspace is set up is that it automatically has all of that built for us using the command, uh, npm run serve or npm, sorry, npm start. So I'm going to do npm start, which is going to call ng serve. ng serve is going to compile my code. You can see right now it's going through and compiling all different modules. And it'll compile it success, hopefully it'll compile it successfully. And once the compiler finishes, another handy feature is that it's gonna sit and watch those files. So if anything changes in these files, it's going to recompile that code. So as an example, if I were to go to um, my app component.ts and let's just change this to, instead of title, I'm gonna say Angular Bridge and I'm gonna save this. You'll note that over here in my terminal, it's kicked off another compilation didn't have to build everything. It was a lot faster this time. Only a small portion of the code changed. As a result, it just rebuilds those pieces. So I want you to notice another thing that it says, and that is that we have a live development server listening on localhost 4200 in my browser. You can see that localhost 4200 now shows this default Angular app. So this is obviously not what we're gonna build, but this is what it's generated for us with the, the initial boilerplate. So everything is set up and we can see it. So my recommendation to you is when you're gonna start working on your code, you do, I'm just gonna kill this compiler again. So remember you can either, you can either do ng serve, and I'm doing this from the root of my project, 
or you can do npm start, they'll do the same thing. And it will spin up the compiler, compile your, uh, transpile your TypeScript, bundle everything, and start up a hot reload server so that we can debug this code interactively in the browser. Just out of interest, if, if I made a mistake here, like for example, if I didn't close uh, my, if I didn't close my string, and if I save this, it's gonna show me that I have a problem here. So the compiler is gonna come back and it's gonna say, you know, you've got an error in this file, app component TS on line nine at position 26, character position 26, you have an unterminated string literal. And you can see that the tooling for this is really good because I my my editor is telling me there's my linter says you're you know you're missing a semicolon. Well, I'm more than missing a semicolon. I'm also you can see TypeScript says you have an unterminated string literal. So I have lots of interactive information inside of the editor. My compiler tells me that there's a problem here. And also you can see that my hot reload server has surfaced this error for me and it says, all right, you know, I can't load this because it's not possible for me to compile it. So if I go back and I fix this, save that again, it compiles happily and I'm back. Okay, so you can get into this cycle of development, save your files, recompile, and test everything that's going on there. Okay, so now you've got your app running in the browser. What are your options for debugging it? I wanna take you through two different workflows for doing your debugging, and you can use a combination of these two. Both of them rely on the dev tools that are available in the browser. So the first way I'm gonna show you is just to do it natively in the browser. At the moment I'm using Chrome, but you could use Firefox, Safari, Edge, all of them have really good debugging options. And throughout the course, I'll probably switch browsers frequently, which I would suggest that you do as well for testing. So I'm gonna open up my inspector and I'll show you some of what I can, I can intuit by coming in and, and trying to do some of the debugging. So one of the first things that I want you to notice is that this was our index.html. You can see on, um, on the screen, I've got my initial HTML and you can see that the HTML that's being loaded in the browser, what I have here in the inspector is similar, but it's different. So for example, one of the things that's really different is the fact that I have all of these scripts that have been loaded here and those have been injected by uh, Webpack. So they've been injected and now they're running there. I didn't have any of them defined here when I um, initially loaded this. So if you go to the network tab, I'm gonna reload this page. You'll see how it loads the page. So it loads the HTML document, which, um, here it is here. And then it starts loading up all of these scripts, runtime.js, polyfill.js, styles.js, vendor.js, and then eventually main.js. So all of our code that we're writing is in this main bundle. And if you take a look at the bundle, it's just this one giant file and all of our different modules have been bundled together into one file and Webpack is gonna take care of allowing all of the things that we were doing previously when we were importing modules and requiring different things, it's gonna make all of that stuff build. However, when you look at this, this is really not gonna be fun to debug. It doesn't look anything like what our original code looked like. Um, you know, like th th this is no good. So this is not what we wanna do in terms of debugging. So let me take you through what our options are for actually being able to debug this code. So in the sources tab, if you go to sources, what you're gonna see is, I'll just, um, if you don't see this area on the left-hand side, you're gonna wanna see the navigator. So you can see all of the files on the left-hand side of the screen. And you'll see that in my page right now, I have two domains. I have the domain, this origin here, localhost 4200. This is what's being loaded. So if I open this up, you're gonna see a whole bunch of JavaScript files. So obviously we're working in TypeScript when we're in the editor and when we write our code because Angular uses TypeScript. But over here, we're now in JavaScript. So again, if I click on main.js, you can see that same you can see that same file here, like so, okay? 
you don't want to debug this. You don't want to set breakpoints in here or try and use this. So I'm going to get rid of it. It's not, this is not going to help me. I'm going to close these other files. I don't want them. And I'll show you what else we can do. So instead of debugging via this origin here, localhost 4200, what I can do instead, and you might have noticed when I opened this file, you see at the top it says source map detected. Webpack is going to generate a source map for you which is going to allow the browser to know that this line in the generated JavaScript file matches with some other file and line in an original TypeScript file or JavaScript file or some other source file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Webpack over here. Instead of localhost 4200, I'm going to open up Webpack. I'll shrink this down. And you want to go into this dot folder here. So I'm going to open this up. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see all of the code, all of the packages and modules that are being that are being loaded. So what do, what do we have here? We can see node modules. Anything that's being loaded in from the node modules folder is here because it's been imported into the bundle. And more importantly, for our purposes, everything that's in source is also here. So you'll notice inside source, now I have the same as my source directory over here. So there's source app. If I go and look, you can see that app uh, module.ts. Or if I say, um, let's look at my app component.ts. So here, here's the line that I was just working on inside of my editor when I was in my app component. Those two lines are the same line. So these files here I can use to work the way you would normally work in the Chrome debugger. So if I were, for example, if I set a breakpoint on this line and I refresh my app, you'll see that it's going to stop at that line when it gets executed. So the browser isn't executing app component.ts TypeScript file, but what it is doing is it is via the source maps, it knows that when this transpiled line of code gets run inside of the browser, it needs to take me over to this other file to show me. So here I can do things like I can inspect variables. This is not an exciting piece of code to debug yet because we don't have anything in here, but you can see that title hasn't been set yet. So title is undefined. Or if I hover over, you know, other pieces of the, of this, I'll get more information. I get a call stack. You can see that I'm deep, deep, deep inside of the call stack here, uh, inside of all of the code that's like uh, all the module loading code, all of the Angular platform code, etc. And eventually my app components constructor is you know going to be run like these here. It's setting up these properties. I can use, I can look at variables, you know, in various different scopes, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of different things I can do here. I could step over a line of code and, you know, now title has been, has been executed. I could hit play and I could let my code continue to run. So this is great because now I have the ability inside of Chrome to be able to say, I want to debug directly inside of my TypeScript files. So if you, another trick, when you come in to look at the sources, if you want to navigate through all of your files to find something like this, you can, but I find it tedious, especially as your, as your source tree gets bigger. So there's another trick you can do, and you can see that right here, Chrome is telling me. Now I'm on a Mac, so on a Mac, everything uses the command symbol, command P to open a file. If you're on Linux or Windows, this is going to be control P. So what you do is you click here and you do command P and it's going to bring up a drop down and it's going to allow you to specify, like start typing. So let's say I wanted to work on my app component. So I type in app and right away you can see app.module, app.component.ts, app.component.html. And these are all coming out of, you notice they're coming out of the webpack source map here. So I'm going to click on this file. It takes me directly into the file that I want to actually work on and debug. So again, that's command or control P depending on which platform you want you're on. And then you start typing module app, whatever, and it will autocomplete using the files that that exist for you. Okay. So 
that's the first method. First method is let's do it all natively inside of the browser, which is I highly recommend this. This is great. Um, do this. Let me show you a second option. Another trick you can use is you can connect Visual Studio to the Chrome debugger tools over a, uh, a network pipe so they can, they can talk to each other remotely. This is a really powerful feature. What's nice about it is it allows you to do everything directly inside of your editor. So I'll put a link to this page. This is in the Visual Studio um, docs and they've got tutorials like this for Node, React, etc. So everything I'm showing you here would work with React or other other tools, but you know, again, I want we're doing it in the context of of Angular. So what do we have to do? Uh, I'll scroll down here and show you the basic idea. You need to install an extension so that Chrome, sorry, so that Visual Studio Code can talk to whatever browser backend that you want to work on. So I'm going to go and if you go to the extensions tab and you type in debugger, you'll see, for example, that there is the debugger for Chrome. I've already got this installed on my machine. There's a debugger for Firefox, which I have installed on my machine, etc. So there's lots of different debugging extensions that you can install that will allow you to connect your editor's Visual Studio Code's built-in debugger, which is really powerful. It will allow it to connect over to something that's hosting your app so you can, so you can debug it. So what, if you haven't got these installed, you want to install it. I'm going to demonstrate, because I'm using Chrome, I'm going to demonstrate doing this against Chrome. And you want to install this into, um, into, your, into your editor. OK. The next thing that you need to do is you need to, for example, set a breakpoint. So let's do the exact same thing we just did a second ago. If I go to my um, app component, and let's say I'm interested in setting a breakpoint on this line of my TypeScript file. Okay, how do I do it? Exactly the same thing that we just did in Chrome, we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna see if, you'll notice that as my mouse goes to the left of line nine, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna set a breakpoint. So now I've got a breakpoint set on this line right here. Now right now, I'm not currently debugging. So this breakpoint's not gonna do anything. So I have to do a number of things for, in order for this to be possible. So the first thing that I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to have my code built and I'm gonna have to have the web server running. So remember, how did we do this? npm start or ng serve from the root directory, one or the other of those two things in order to get all the code compiled, webpack to bundle it, source maps to be generated, and for the, <clears throat> excuse me, the hot reload server to be created. Okay, so this is critical. You have to do this. You have to have something running at 4200 like we have here on localhost, okay? The next step that you have to do is you have to create a, a debug configuration in Visual Studio Code so that the debugger knows when you say you want to debug, what it's supposed to do. So what you can do is you go to the um, the run, I call it debug, but go to the go to the run and debug area of Visual Studio Code. So you're not not in your files, not in find, not in extensions. You want to go to run and debug. Now on mine, because I don't currently have a configuration file created, it gives me the option up at the top, it says to, to customize run and debug, create a launch.json file. Visual Studio needs to have a file, a JSON file, which specifies how to do all of your various debugging tasks. So I'm gonna click on create a launch JSON file. When I do this, it gives me a set of options and it says, here are some pre-built configurations that it can generate for you. So in my case, I'm interested in using Chrome. So I'm gonna click on Chrome and it's going to generate a file for me. Okay, 
So let's take a look at what we have here. This file has been placed inside of a new directory. So we have a directory now called .vs code. .vs code contains any number of settings and configurations for the editor. So when you work on lots of software projects with people who use Visual Studio Code, they'll often have one of these directories and that's what it's for, is to um, configure, configure how things should, should be for this app. So this thing says that it's going to launch Chrome and it has a name. This name here is what's going to show up when you go to the run. So you can see I have a drop down menu here that says launch Chrome against localhost. So that name comes from whatever you have here. And the last thing that we have to worry about is it says we need to, it, we're, we're expecting to debug localhost port 8080. Well, that's not the port we want. We need to use port 4200. So I'm gonna modify this. like so. And I'm going to save this file. And now we can we can try this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to so if I was working on my code and I was looking at this file and I said, "Wow, I want to run this code and I want to debug this. I want to stop at this exact line. I have some bug. I want to figure out what's going on here." So, I've set my breakpoint. I'm going to go to the run and debug area and I'm going to click on play. It's gonna, it's gonna start, let me get this set up properly. Let me, let me restart it, forgive me. I'm gonna start this, it starts up the server, there we go. So what's happened here is it launched an instance of the app localhost 4200, you can see that it is paused in Visual Studio Code. So just the same way we would have paused it when we were um, setting a breakpoint inside of um, the browser's dev tools. Here you can see that I have very similar information to what we had when we were in Chrome. So I have a call stack. You can see all the different pieces of the call stack here, and I could click through to different parts, and you can see that it'll take me to different pieces of my code. So if I want to jump around and see what's going on, I can have a look at different variables. I can inspect things inside here, inside of my, uh, my app as it's running. So this is great because I automatically have debugging information built directly into my editor. And whatever I need to do here, if I want to step over a line of code, so now we can see that um, you know the title, the title has changed to Angular Bridge, etc. So this, if I hit play, it'll let it run. So I might have had other um, breakpoints that are going to get hit at this point. So which should you use? Should you use Visual Studio Code or Chrome? I, I don't know, try them both. I think that I'm so comfortable in the Chrome dev tools that I tend to do this stuff in the Chrome dev tools. But I think that the, the tight integration in Visual Studio Code is kind of nice because um, when as you get into the zone and you're working on this code, you're not jumping context all the time. You can um, debug in the same code that you're, you're, you're you know, same place that you're writing, it'll look identical. So how do I get out of this? Um, I have this movable toolbar inside Visual Studio Code, which has, you know, pause, step over, step into, step out, etc. And I also have a stop button. So you'll know that you're debugging. If you look at the bottom of my, if you look at the bottom of my editor, you see that it's gone orange. So it changes color. So you can see that it's in debug mode. If I press stop, it changes color again. It's no longer being debugged. You notice that my call stack disappeared. All of that, all of that has gone. So play with those, try them out. And if you haven't used the debugger extensively in the past, I would highly recommend that you spend some time learning to use it. There's some really good uh, videos for all the different browsers, debug tools that you could spend some time on. And if you spend an hour learning your debugger, it's an hour well spent because you'll use it nonstop. The time to learn to use your debugger isn't when you have a bug and you have a deadline. It's before you have a problem and just really understanding all the kinds of things that you can do. 
So I'm gonna pause this here, and in the next video, what we'll do is we'll start actually building out all the components for our web app so that we can start building this thing.